Hello and welcome to the in news series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Divedi and in this segment today we are going to analyze the difference between genetically edited crops and genetically modified crops. Very importantly, we have to know the basis of difference and why are we discussing it. So very importantly, another thing that preliminary facts are important, whatever facts I am going to pick out here. Other than that, from the perspective of mains examination, GS mains paper 3, very important. So, why are we discussing it? Because on Wednesday, the central government has eased the rules to introduce genetically edited crops. Now, when I say genetically edited crops, you might get a little layman definition into your heads that it is something to do with modifying or editing the genetics. But have you ever thought about what is the basic difference between GM crops, genetically modified crops and genetically edited crops? No? So here we are going to discuss about and even if you know, you are very able to understand the basic difference plus what are the pros and cons of it. So India is the release of genome editing norms. Experts say MOVE will help readers and researchers. What is this basically? Before that, let's talk about what is genome edited crops. Genome edited crops are those crops, the genetic material of which are either deleted or anything has been done to edit the outcome of the process. Here in India, BT cotton is India's only transgenic crop which is approved for commercial cultivation. But more than that, we have to know that this is a GM crop, genetically modified crop. And there has been a ban on the commercial release of BT brinjal, which is also a genetically modified crop. GM mustard has also not been released. For India, it is just BT cotton. And since we know that since the new government has come into being, there is no new GM product that has been there. Now, German and US scientists discovered a technique a decade ago that if they edit the gene of a crop, here I am talking about agriculture, the outcome is not very distinguishable from the tradition crop. Suppose wheat, if I edit it genetically without the use of any foreign or alien species or alien gene to modify the outcome, that is genetically edited crop. If I introduce a foreign species, then that is genetically modified crop. So that is genetically engineered one uh, or edited one. And here what happens with a small strand, this is suppose nucleus, okay, nucleus. And this caves through or cleaves through the basis of a gene that is nucleic acid. If I take it out and delete it and I don't insert any new material then this will become a genetically edited DNA. The outcome of it will not be very distinguishable from the traditional or the parent DNA. That is why not a lot of drastic difference can be expected. Okay and certain important methods are there such as site directed nucleus and sequence specific nucleus. A nucleus is an enzyme, okay, that cleaves through the nucleic acid which is the basis of a gene and also after a certain period of time, CRISPR-Cas9 technology was also discovered. CRISPR is the short form for clustered regularly interspaced palindromic repeat. CRISPR, this is associated with the protein based uh, system that is Cas9, okay. So, this particular editing tool has made the scientists to grow leaps and bounds when we talk about genetic engineering. So now what do we know about site directed nucleus? Now nature of the edit that is carried out, it is divided into, the process is divided into three categories, SDN1, SDN2 and SDN3, okay. So we have to know that there is certain difference between SDN1, SDN2 and SDN3. Three. If we talk about SDN1, here the gene is either inserted with uh, a modified nucleus or it is deleted. Okay. 
बट देर इज नो इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ एनी फॉरन और एलियन जीन हियर इन एस डी एन वन ओके सो नो फॉरन जीन नो एलियन जीन इन एस डी एन वन only the strand is deleted or a nucleus is inserted if we talk about sdn2 here the there is a template of gene that is edited here also no alien gene is introduced the edited template is inserted into the gene that we want to have the outcome to be differentiable the edited gene when the edited gene template when it is inserted into the host gene then it will give rise to a sequence a specific sequence will occur because of which the entire dna gets modified okay here also no alien gene is there no introduction of alien gene now comes sdn3 in sdn3 large scale dna modification takes place here a foreign or an alien organism or a gene is introduced and it is very similar to genetically modified crop okay so i hope this is clear to you moving on if we talk about what is the particular new uh, notification say first we have to know for genetically modified crops it's a cumbersome process to introduce a crop into the market the authority which has the powers in hands for it is genetically engineering appraisal committee it is a statutory body which is formed under environment protection act of 1986 remember this very tricky question for prelims and it comes under the ministry of environment and forest okay and which act governs it to be the authority for observing and clarifying and uh, uh, approving the genetically modified crop it's the epa 1986 rules for manufacture use import export and storage of hazard microorganisms genetically or engineered organisms or cells 1989 okay so under that only we will be able to know that genetically engineering appraisal committee has the authority to have any sort of interference anything uh, any sort of approval with respect to that and that is just for gmos genetically modified organisms genetically uh, modified crops and here what has happened that the new notification says because it is not involved with introduction of a foreign organisms in the crops what happens that gmo the genetic engineering appraisal committee will have no say right now it will have no say because it is not introducing any foreign material any foreign gene it is just editing deleting or inserting the nucleus okay so exempted site detecting detected nucleus 1 and 2 now i told you 1 and 2 does not involve any foreign material sdn3 is similarly to genetic modified organisms so if genetic addition is going to take place with respect to sdn3 this process is going to be used then it will come under the come under the purview of geac okay so it would rely for, now whatever edited crops are there of course it is going to rely on certain reports it would rely on reports of the institutional biosafety committee to exclude exogenous genetic material so for the time being initially the report which is given by institutional biosafety committee which is under the epa rules of 1989 it will have an authority for it later subsequently it will come under the seed acts which is under the ministry of agriculture okay i hope this much is clear so this difference as i told you in the initial level itself that genetically modified crops are actually there is a modification of the genetic material of the host dna which is by the introduction of foreign genetic material now if i talk about what is the difference between gmo and genetically edited crops of course at the initial level i have specifically told you foreign material introduction of foreign dna organism is going to be there and if we talk about the basis it's of course the foreign genetic material okay so modification of a gene genetic material of the host if it takes place because of the introduction of foreign genetic material 
then it will be coming under GMO like BT cotton. For that, the best choice to have mining of the mining of the foreign material that we need to place in the host G DNA is the soil bacteria. It is the best mining source for such genes. And here I am going to specifically talk about BT cotton. Now, BT cotton is the solution to fight pink ballworms, of course, and cotton ballworms are a pest. So, what happens that in the, if you talk about the bacteria that is used to mine, the better genes is Bacillus thuringiensis. Okay, and here it introduces genetic material either cry 1 AB or cry 2 AC and this foreign DNA cry 1 AB or cry 2 AC is introduced into the normal cotton host cotton the regular cotton genetic material. Now because of that there is a produ production of cry 1 AB cry 2 AC okay. Now endotoxins are produced because of that. Now these toxins they make it resilient to pink bottoms and that has made cotton to be so so much in demand for uh, particular purposes and specifically where Deccan soil is found. So this is what happens okay it develops a plant which is completely different from the traditional cotton. Now what are the pros and cons of such a process? Pros are of course because of the genetic engineering itself I am saying. One thing to be, keep in, uh, to be kept in mind over here is the production of crops with respect to genetic addition and also genetic modification. The outcome will be of course pest resilient or disease resilient because we are hoping that because of the insertion or a deletion of a nucleus it will, I'm not saying nucleus, it's a different thing, nucleus. Uh, so what will happen, the outcome has to go like that it is resilient to pests and disease because the particular nucleus which I have inserted or deleted might be conducive for pests to be there. So first is that. Climate change because it is happening so quickly that we need to produce certain crops which can work on low irrigation and low water capacity as well. So for that also. Growth in food production is there and also the quality of food gets bettered. That means the welfare for the farmers as well as welfare for the citizens because it will increase the income of the farmers. It will be, it, it, there will be less pests, less wastage, better quality of food. Of course, it will do that itself. And if we talk about the cons, there is an issue of ethics. Now, because there has been a weakening of the regulation with respect to genetically uh, edited crops what happens there can be an issue of ethics there can be an issue of not well researched enough crops coming into being and that might give rise to uncertainty how the human body will take that uh, crop particular crop and there will be safety concerns as well we do not know if new pests will emerge in order to upgrade themselves because pests and viruses they work as, like that only new sort of new category of pests are there and again research has to take place for better uh, for upgrading the crop as well and for that decades and decades go by when we talk about developing a new crop and there is a lack of assurance with respect to the crops that we have right now are genetically diverse what if the genetic diversity in the garb of modif uh, in the garb of modification as well as gene editing gets lost that is also a thing so first we need to make sure that the crops are well researched and the rollout of such crop should be in tandem with ethics and morality. There should be a fine balance between saving the environment and the economy. Although it will give rise to huge income, nice uh, handsome income for the farmers. But what if it makes the crop more conducive to pests, more irrigation is needed for them and it is not good for the climate. Also, envision should be there with respect to long-term future for the next 50 to 100 years, not just for short-term 10 to 20 years. And awareness should be generated at the local level, at the level of citizenry as well, because they need to know, they should know, they have the right to know what are the pros and cons of, or what is the actual need of such thing. 
Now, uh, one thing that we have to know that certain countries such as Argentina, USA, Canada, Israel, they have very easy notifications, they have very easy rules with respect to genetically edited crops. That is why India has learned from their experience as well. So, the uh, final outcome will be based on once the rollout is there and once we know what we have achieved uh, once again. So, let's now move on to our means based question which is how are genetically modified crops different from genetically edited crops? Discuss the pros and cons of genetically edited crops in 250 words, okay? So, that's it for today. Tomorrow, we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.